Okay, let's start our discussion of quantum field theory. Um, we had been discussing about in and out states, and and we were interested in uh, scattering in and interacting field theory. So uh, we'll continue our discussion from there. Let's um, do a very quick recap. We had assumed that in the field theory that we are interested in, in those theories, there exist single particle states. Okay, so we had assumed the existence of single particle states. Okay, and that's a good assumption to make because the world in which we live, we know that there are single part, uh, there are particles and you can create a state where you have only one particle. For example, you can have one electron or one positron or one photon. So this is a very uh, reasonable assumption. Okay, and then uh, as I mentioned, we were introducing in and out states. These are the basis states in which, which we are going to use to describe scattering. So we had introduced in and out states. So these are states that are defined at t equal to zero if you are looking at the Schrodinger picture. And of course you can, and, and we are going to be working with Heisenberg picture and a state at t equal to zero you can take at, take as the, the Heisenberg state. And of course, then the states do not evolve with time, only the operators do. Anyhow, so um, you can, for example, have a state which is labeled by only one momentum k in and I told you that if you have a in state which has only one particle there is nothing else that can happen okay so that particle will just keep moving in the direction it was moving with the same momentum and um, it's uh, it's going to keep doing so so uh, the in state is same as the out state and there is no real meaning of putting these labels in and out in that case and we can just label them as k okay um, but of course if you have a state which in the far past looks like a state which has two non-interacting particles because they are very far apart from each other and that uh, state is go not necessarily going to evolve to a single two, two particle state, okay? It may evolve to a state containing 10 particles. Okay, so um, a state which you can label as K1, K2, N. Okay, uh, and if you fold it properly, you can create a two particle state in the far past, but that doesn't necessarily evolve to um, a two particle state in the final state. So I cannot drop this label in as I could in the in the case of single particle states. Okay, um, my plan is that in this lecture I'm not going to write a lot of equations. I mean there will be but not too many and I don't want to do a lot of algebra because I would like you to have a a picture of what we are going to do so that once I start being more accurate with um, the descrip description of states and everything, you already have a mental picture of what you're doing and you're not drowning in the, in the equations. So let's start by first having a single particle state. Okay, so I'm just creating cartoons now. So I want to, let's say, have a a single particle located here, okay, in the far past. Meaning I want to create a state which will be well localized in space at some position x0. Okay, so I want the particle to be here. Okay, and I want it to have a fairly well defined momentum, let me call it p0. So 
so of course um, because we are uh, doing quantum mechanics we cannot have a very i mean we cannot have the momentum exactly to be p naught and position exactly to be x naught that's not possible because of heisenberg and certainty principle but you could choose it to make as um, um, as sharp as you want in p naught and then um, correspondingly it will be uh, your uncertainty principle will tell you how sharp you can make it in x naught but you know you can fairly localize the particle both in space and momentum now after all when you are uh, for example when you are preparing a um, an electron that is going to run in some collider okay li like lep there was a machine called lep where now lhc is housed so there you used to have electron positron collisions okay so you know with what momentum you are firing the electron and uh, from which place it is coming out so at that point where when it is coming out of the electron gun let me call it an electron gun uh, its momentum and position are fairly well defined so you can create those states okay now this state is well localized in space and momentum in far past and as time progresses okay so along the horizontal line you should imagine time so time flows in this direction as time progresses this um, this will start spreading in position and momentum okay sorry th this will start spreading in in the the wave packet which you have constructed it will sp it will start spreading okay so you now um, look at at t equal to 0 so here is time t equal to 0 which you, we have chosen arbitrarily and i choose a basis state a basis momentum state which is an in state or an out state because for single particle it doesn't matter see this is a single particle state right there is only one particle so that state i can construct out only of single particle in state in states not out of uh, multi particle in state so there is no role of uh, this one for example in constructing this one this particle okay so i can only take this one so i take k so that's a basis state and of course i should multiply it with some function okay and what should that function be let's take it to be a gaussian okay and what do i demand of that gaussian that this when this and this product when it is evolved back in time and we go to minus infinity this gaussian should be such that it picks out only this position meaning it is only sharply peaked around x naught at t equal to minus infinity and around p naught at t equal to minus infinity okay and how sharp you prepare this will determine how sharply defined the momentum and position of your um, uh, uh, your particle at t equal to minus infinity okay so you go backwards so you you construct the state evolve it backwards in time you have to you have to choose appropriately a gaussian and you get this state now let's see what happens when it runs forward in time so you have created that state now it it goes further in time and of course the wave packet will start uh getting delocalized okay so it will not remain so uh, very sharply peaked so let's say if it was very sharply peaked here it will start becoming a bit delocalized okay or actually this is it's going to become very delocalized okay and that's how that's what will happen okay now okay so suppose you now want to have a two particle state in the far past what should you do so let's construct now a two particle state So what do you want? You want to have two particles which are very far apart from each other. So you can imagine one in one galaxy, another in another galaxy. 
okay if you like or one in delhi one in bombay so that when they are so, because they are so far apart they are not going to interact with each other so you can treat these as two individual single particles okay so this is a two particle state now how are you going to create this two particle state at t equal to minus infinity well let's start with the basis states and the relevant basis states are these ones which carry these two labels k1 and k2 okay and what are we going to do we are going to multiply it with some function okay which will turn into two well separated gaussians so let me for example have two gaussians okay which you multiply with this one and then you evolve backwards in time and when you evolve backwards in time these two gaussians take the following shape so they are going to take a shape which is one which is very sharply localized at some position x1 and some momentum p1 and another one is going to get sh very sharply localized at some position x2 which is bombay or mumbai and x1 which is delhi and some momentum you have chosen p1 and p2 for them okay so they get very sharply localized here okay so these gaussians should evolve into these gaussians okay because if you do so then you have this localization so and of course you'll have to sum over all k1 and k2 okay so you have written down this state at t equal to minus infinity that you have gotten by writing down a linear sum of these in states so you have an integral over k1 and k2 which i'm denoting as a sum for now okay and you have folded with some functions which take you to these two particle states okay which are well separated from each other and similarly if i want to create a state with n particles i have to just do the same thing i should take an in state actually all possible in states and i should multiply with some function which will let's take it as gaussians which will which will give you n particles in the t going to minus infinity limit which are well separated from each other okay and of course you have to sum over all k1 to kn okay so this this is a linear sum of these uh, basis states i should put an n and you appropriately multiply with them with some functions which are called folding functions typically you take them to be gaussian okay so that you are able to create such a state at t equal to minus infinity and this is written at t equal to 0 these states are defined at t equal to 0 okay so um that's how you are going to construct these states i will write down the explicit expressions uh later and in fact we will turn these uh, gaussians to delta functions in the far past okay but uh, that's something for later but i hope the picture is clear how you are going to use the in states to create states which look like uh particles which are not interacting in the far past and similarly you can use out states to create particles which are not interacting and far apart from each other in the far future okay all you have to do is replace the in states by out states okay so that's um how you create these states now let's first um, understand a little bit more clearly what i mean by a particle so you already have a a notion of what a particle is you you have a feeling of what you mean by a particle okay but when you are doing this quantum field theory you are doing these calculations how are you go going to identify that a given state is a, a uh, is a single particle state or not whether it corresponds to a particle or not okay and that's what 
I want to again emphasize, I have already told this in the previous course, but let me repeat it. Um, so, suppose you are given some state, let me write here, a single particle, or what we really mean by a particle. So, suppose you are given some state in the theory which you are working with, okay, whatever theory you like, some interacting theory. Now, I'm not going to write something inside right now because I want to leave it like this. So, this correspond this is some state in your theory. It's given to you. Now, you want to know whether this state is a, is a particle or not. So, what should I do to f determine whether this state correspond is a particle or not? Well, if it's a particle and let's say it's in some momentum eigenstate, okay, so I'm, I'm thinking of a particle which is uh, having a precise momentum. So it is delocalized in space, but it is having a precise momentum. Okay. So if I want to create such a, if I want to, uh, if I take this state and operate on this with the momentum operator, you know, we have already in the previous course learned how to obtain the conserved quantities for example, the momentum or the Hamiltonian or the P mu, which is just H comma P. So let's take the momentum op operator and act on this state. Okay, and suppose I get the following. Suppose I get this. Okay, meaning it returns a value K. So it's an eigenstate of momentum. So it means that I can label it, label the state with K. That's a good label. So I'll now supply that label, which I was not putting earlier. Okay, so that's good. Now let me take the Hamiltonian and act on the same state. Let's say I get the following. I get some number. So this state, I am assuming that it's also a it's a state of both momentum and energy. So I get K for the momentum <coughs> and I get some number which I call or, or uh, some number which I call omega K. Okay. That's what I have gotten. Now what I do is I take case. Um, sorry. I take this omega K square it and subtract from it k square and try to find out what it is okay now if it so happens that what you get on the right hand side is a constant so you can always change the value of k that you have okay you can give it a boost the value of k will change so this k will change correspondingly when you find out the energy by acting with the hamiltonian the omega k will be different okay and for each such um, uh, for each of those different choices of k and omega k, you find out what's the difference of these two squares. And if it turns out to be some constant, then you say that this state k corresponds to a single particle state, or that is, what you're looking at is a single particle. And that constant is called the mass. Okay, let's call it mp square. That constant is the mass square. Okay, so energy square minus the momentum square, if it is a constant, we call that constant uh, as the square root of mass. Okay, and that's how um, you identify that a given state is a single particle state or not. Okay, so this is the dispersion relation you already know. This is the relativistic dispersion relation. And from this, you can see that if mp is a constant, your omega k or the energy is always going to be this. Okay, um, so good. Now, can it be that you are given some state, okay, and you find out its momentum? let's say it's a, in a, some momentum eigenstate and you find out its energy of that state 
and you confuse it with a single particle state okay can can a two particle state be confused with a single particle state is it possible so what i am asking is can a two particle state be identified as a single particle state so let's look at t equal to minus infinity and suppose i have created two particles which are far apart and let's say this one has momentum p1 this one has momentum p2 okay and this one will have also some energy omega 1 omega p1 and this will have some energy omega p2 okay so let me label this state for now as p1 p2 this is state Okay, I'm not saying this one is P1. That particle number one has momentum P1. Particle number has momentum. Particle number two has momentum P2. I'm saying one of them has momentum P1. One of them has another one has momentum P2, because these are indistinguishable. Indistinguishable. I cannot uh, tell which one is which. But anyway, I have two particles, and note that I'm not putting in here because that's a state at equal to minus infinity. Okay, so I take a two-particle state and act with the momentum operator. Well, I will get the following. And if I act with the Hamiltonian of the theory, I will get. Omegas are just the energies of these individual particles. Okay, that's what you are going to get. Now, you might think that okay, there is some momentum, some energy. So maybe I can think of this also as a as one particle, which is having total momentum p one plus p two and total energy omega p one plus p two. Okay. Now let's see whether we can do that. So. what how did we define that um, how did we tell that something is a single particle what you have to do is take the energy of that state square it and from that subtract the momentum of that state square uh, the moment the square of the momentum of that state and if that difference is a constant meaning independent of the values of p1 and p2 you take or k here you take okay then that's a single particle state so let's check whether omega p1 plus omega p2 that's the energy of that state right that that sum so square that minus the momentum of the state is p1 plus p2 square that and ask whether this is a constant if it is a constant then of course yes then you can identify it as a as a particle as a single particle but it i leave it as an exercise to you to show that right hand side is not a constant okay so thus you cannot think of this state as a single particle state you cannot assign a mass to such a state so what i'm saying is this state cannot assign a mass okay because assigning a mass would mean that this square minus the momentum square should come out to be a constant and you know it's not going to be coming out to be a constant once you have done this exercise okay it's a simple exercise to do so please do so okay and similarly any number of particles even if you have more than 2 you will not be able to uh, treat it as a as a single particle state because for the same reason as here okay it will not come the differences will not come out to be a constant 
Okay, but uh, now let's think of um, let's say electrodynamics, where you know you can have a hydrogen atom. Okay, now hydrogen atom is a proton and an electron bound state, so these two are bound together. Now you you know what's the mass of the hydrogen, right? Meaning you can assign a mass to a bound state. So you can say, okay, hydrogen atom is moving with this much of momentum and it has this much of energy and this is the mass of this this atom. So bound states you can assign assign uh, masses. And also note that a bound state. Um, so let me write it down. So a bound state. The bound state you can assign a mass. We can do that. Now, if you have a bound state and you wait for a um, lot of time to pass, let's look at hydrogen atom and you just keep waiting. Um, unless you do something to it, it will not change, right? The hydrogen atom will remain hydrogen atom. It's not that its components are going to run away from each other. So uh, a bound state is going to evolve into the same bound state in far future. And similarly, if you take the hydrogen atom and you start going backwards in time, it, it remains the hydrogen atom. It doesn't change into something else. Okay, So these bound states are also part of your Hilbert space. So not only you have the vacuum and the single particle states and the multiple multi-particle states, you also have these bound states in your theory. They may be there, they may not be there, but that's one possibility okay so good and I'm not sure whether I said but it should be clear that once you assume that there exists single particle states okay it's automatic that you also have multiple particle states in your theory and right? because if you are able to create a particle at some place one particle at some place Nothing will prevent you from creating another particle far away from it. Right? Because your theories are local and they do not uh, prohibit uh, from doing something far away from the first particle. Okay, So these two particle, two particle states can be created once you assume that single particle states can exist in your theory. Okay, So existence of multiple particle states is not an independent assumption. It's it is a consequence of your assumption that single particle states exist. Okay, so what are all the states in your Hilbert space? From based on our physical intuition, and we we realize that of course we have vacuum. Then we have single particle states. Then we can also have multi-particle states. Then of course we can also have bound states. And these are all the states that are um, that are there in your in the Hilbert space. Okay. So um, let me do one small thing. You remember long back somewhere here. Let's go a little. Down. Yeah, you see, I had written down the completeness relation that these out states and in states satisfy. It just means that any out state can be written as a or any state can be written as a linear combination of out states or in states. So I'll take these relations and try to um, write them using what I have talked just now. Okay, so let's look at the completeness relation. Which was alpha n 
alpha in and if you sum over all this alphas you get identity okay and similarly if you take all the states beta out and form this combination then you get all the uh, and then you get identity if you sum over all the out states okay and remember alpha is not necessarily discrete it could be continuous and actually you know because there are single particle states so they th these labels are also continuous so let's take this identity and let's um, let's write doesn't matter which one it's identical so let's identity is so let's take this what are all possible states i have already labeled them here so first is vacuum so let's write down vacuum okay i will use omega for interacting theory vacuum and zero for free theory vacuum so that's one state of course plus you have single particle states so k in and k out so let's write down k in okay we are looking at in in uh, this relation and you have to sum over all k's okay plus you have these in states which have two labels and of course i have to sum over all k1 and k2 and because k1 and k2 are continuous labels we really have to integrate but i'll keep it as a sum and then of course you have all other multiparticle states sorry all other states which have more than two labels which correspond to the states that in um, that you can with which you can construct uh, multiple particle states so i will loosely call it multiparticle states okay but you understand what i mean that you can fold it with appropriate function and evolve backwards in time and that will give you a multiparticle state at t equal to minus infinity okay so uh, right now i'm just being a bit a bit careless in writing this and then of course you can have all the bound states there may be more than one okay so that's how this identity is made up so now let's um, make this more precise at least up to here so of course as i said this in is unnecessary there is no requirement of this in label because there is no distinction between in out so you can just drop these labels so let's look at now this piece only okay, because i want to um replace this sum by the integral so i just want to look at how it looks like when you replace the sum by the integral okay for that it's important that i recall how i how i want to norm um okay for that it's important that i should know how i want to normalize the states in this theory okay and i will choose the same normalization that i chose in the case of free field theory when which we did in the last course and the normalization will be the following maybe i will write down so that you can recall easily in free theory in free in free klein gordon theory we had done the following k was defined to be 2 omega k square root a dagger k acting on the vacuum okay and we had this normalization okay you can replace this p by k because this delta function um it can change the p to it doesn't matter right whether you have p or k because of this delta function because this delta function ensures that k is equal to p otherwise you don't get any contribution so this is what we had in free theory 
So what we'll do is we'll choose the same normalization of states like this one in this case also. Okay, so I will choose a normalization of states in this theory. We will normalize the states or single particle states, single particle states in 5 4 theory to be uh, 5 4 theory as the following. It will be again the same. See, it's up to you. You, you can you can choose to nor normalize it differently. You may choose to drop the omega p here. Okay, that's a normalization that you can take. Okay, and it will not affect anything if you are consistent with all the calculations that you do. But we choose this normalization, and it's a nice normalization because the right hand side is Lorentz invariant. Okay, so that's an exercise for you. Show that uh, R H S right hand side is a Lorentz invariant object. And that's the reason we want to keep this normalization. Meaning if you were to take the state and um, boost it, so if you boost all the states by some, uh, some amount, so the state K will become the label will change to some k prime p will change to some p prime because the momenta will change but the new states that you get their inner products will still be the same because this factor on the right hand side is not going to change okay and that's what you have to show that this is Lorentz invariant so we'll keep this normalization and um, now let's see with this how do I write this piece so if you have a single particle state of some momentum p or let's say um, yeah p then I should be able to write it as a linear sum of um, other single particle states and of course it will it will um, pick out the delta let me say it again so let's say I want to write this P as the following so I P I write as so what I'm trying to say is that if you look at this combination this is an identity if you are only restricting if you are restricting yourself only to single particle states right? because any single particle state can be written as a linear sum of this right if you look at the identity over the entire Hilbert space then you have the vacuum single particle states and uh, these in states with two labels and in state with n number of labels and bound state everything but if you are interested only in the subspace of single particle states then in that subspace this is identity right so now let's construct this so this is identity and I want to write cat p so cat p is this okay so this is a correct equation now what I want to do is I want to remove the sigma and have the appropriate integral okay so that's what I'm trying to do now so I'll use our so I'll keep sigma for a while so I'll use our normalization that we have chosen and that is 2 omega k or p whichever you like delta cube k minus p and that's it this I can write as sigma this because of this delta function k is forced to be p so I will put this k to be p and you have um, I can write it here 2 omega k delta cube k minus p okay so on the left hand side you have cat p right hand side you have cat p so this should be identity okay and you know you know that i have to replace sigma by an integral over 
k so i have to replace it by integral over k right because here itself it is integral d cube k so i have d cube k 2 mega p delta cube k minus p get p okay so clearly if i just write d cube k this is not going to give you one okay that's not going to give you identity and if you instead of d cube k you write d cube k over 2 omega p then this works out right because this 2 omega p will cancel this 2 omega p and then you have just a cat p on the right hand side so that is fine which means that our um, normalization that we have chosen forces us to use this when we are looking at single particle states so let's write down the identity for the full Hilbert space. It is vacuum plus d cube k over 2 omega p and um, let me just see if it is all okay. Delta cube, yeah, that's fine. And then you have what? plus of course bound states and contributions from uh, multi-particle states or more appropriately contribution from states in states with more than one label with more than one label okay this is good okay this is all good and nice but we realize that we haven't done the most elementary thing yet we haven't told how we are going to create a single particle state in an interacting theory right i haven't told you how uh, how to create a single particle state in an interacting theory see unless i know how to create a single particle state i will not know how to create multiple particle states then i cannot scatter them and find out what's happening right so the first thing to do is to create a single particle state now this um, is something which we'll do in the next lecture but let's at least understand um, what we should be looking for so let's go back to free theory what we did there free theory in free theory in free klein garden theory when i wanted to create a, a state with momentum k all i had done was taken a dagger k and acting acted on the vacuum okay apart from some normalization which is here okay that's what we did we hit with a dagger on the free vacuum that's free theory okay or equivalently if i wanted to create a particle at position x i hit with phi okay uh, on the vacuum and I create a particle at x okay where this x without any vector symbol is this four vector okay so a dagger of course is something you can construct out of phi's and pi's because after all what do you have in your theory you have the operators phi's and pi's where pi is the phi dot Okay, or the con conjugate uh, operator conjugate to phi these are the two operators that you have and everything has to be constructed out of these there's nothing else right and you have the vacuum so you hit on the vacuum with phi you create a single particle state that's what we saw in free theory or if you want to create a state which is of a definite momentum then you hit with some combination of phi's and pi's which is what we call a dagger and create that state so you might think that okay we can 
just hit with the phi of interacting theory on the interacting vacuum and create a single particle state but that's not going to work okay because the reason all this all these things worked here why we could define an a dagger and why this created a single particle state was because we were in the harmonic paradigm okay we were working in harmonic approximation meaning the action that we had was a quadratic action in the fields okay so here it worked the reason this method worked was this method worked because uh, of harmonic approximation okay meaning we were having only only quadratic terms in the action so what you can do is you can um try to repeat the steps which we did in the in the free theory where you had only quadratic terms okay and uh, see that it doesn't work you are unable to uh, get anything out of it I mean if you in addition to having your uh, free clan garden uh, action you also have the five four term or any other interacting term the steps will not um yield uh yield a state which you can identify as a single particle state that's not going to happen so the naive expectation that phi this is interacting theory phi phi of um, let's write t comma x acting on interacting vacuum it's not going to give you a single particle state okay it doesn't work but still you know that if you want to create a particle all that you have is phi and pi right those those are the operators in your theory and you have vacuum and hitting on the vacuum you are going to create a particle so somehow it still has to work okay even though i'm saying it's not going to work but there is not much that can happen it still has to work and that's what i will show you um how to construct single particle states in interacting theory and once we have done that creating multi particle states will be easy you have to just hit it several times at several different places and you create multiple particles and then you can let them evolve in time and scatter them and we can try to ask uh what do we get when these things scatter okay so i think the question is clear what we want to do now and i will show you in the next um lecture how to do these things okay